Hello, little, hello, little puppy dog. This is Bella. I'm sure you have all seen her before on some of Mr. Vegg's videos. She just got a haircut yesterday. Say hello, pupper. Oh, isn't she precious? Look at her. Oh, look at those eyes. Let's see if we can get her close. Oh, look at that, sweetie. Oh, gosh. You know, we should just have this little shit you on the videos instead of that other guy, the boss, that Mr. Vag fella. I think she's, she's so much more fun to look at. No comment. You know, for lunch today, I had sardines packed in olive oil. Is the lighting okay today, V-Man? You know, I'm still thinking about that Air Force Two, that new film that, that they're going to shoot out in Hollywood. I think I could, you know, I think I could play the lead. Uh, no comment. Alrighty, I've got an official lyric sheet here. Hotel Array, and then in parentheses, yellow room with a crooked floor. This was written in 26th of July, 2020. So this was written during the COVID lockdowns. Or is it a lockup? I, mean, I was never sure on that. Um, okay. First verse. It was a yellow room with a crooked floor. Was it really a crooked floor? And yes, there actually was a yellow room with a crooked floor uh, in the hotel array. I think it was up on the top floor in the back. So that little snip is true. A do not disturb sign hung on the door. I don't, I don't even know if there were uh, do not disturb signs. Uh, I mean, that was an inexpensive hotel. I don't, I don't even remember. Uh, they rhyme. Door, floor, I understand. It was too late to head out too early to rest. Too late to head out too early to rest. That, that, that line was thrown in there really because of uh, it rhymed with dress. So... <laughs> Um, we would head out any time of the night. It wouldn't, it doesn't matter what time it is back then. So she tried on that thrift store dress. Thrift store dress. This is true. There was a thrift store dress. Girlfriend had a thrift store dress and she did try it on, but not at the hotel array. In a different building, different time. And he watched her walk the crooked runway that night at the Hotel Array. Well, you know what? I like that. It creates a setting. It, it, if I know it's itching again, God, every time I get on camera, it, can you cut that out? Because I was chicken. All right, the second verse. Seagulls were calling in the morning haze. I like that word, haze. Seagulls would be calling every morning. You'd hear them, they'd wake you up sometimes at three o'clock in the afternoon. Kids on bicycles were hauling up the alleyways. Kids on bicycles up the alleys. We used to do that. My cousins and me, my brother, we used to zoom up the alleys on our Schwinn bikes, our spider bikes, our bomber bikes, our chopper bikes. Yeah. So they drove to Point Diner for short stacks and eggs. Now a short stack is usually three little pancakes stacked up. It's a short stack, okay? And you put some butter, maybe, and some syrup on top of that. Oh, 
side of sausage. A side of sausage or bacon. You gotta love it. Now driving to Point Diner, if this is the summertime, probably not happening. With it, with a bottle of amaretto, there was a bottle of amaretto in a in a purse, but that all happened in the winter time. You know, nothing much is open in the winter time on the island. We drove across to the Point Diner. Okay, so again, pulling stuff in from a different time, but from the same area, same place, pulling it into the story so that everything fits together. Um. She had a bottle of amaretto hidden between her legs. Now I had to Google amaretto. It's some kind of a liqueur. Sweet, I think. Maybe Italian. Hidden between her legs. What's up with that? I guess I understand. I, it was snuck into the diner, okay? They went to this point diner place and they snuck, snuck the stuff in. I won't, I, do, I wouldn't advise that. It's not something you want to try at home. Hmm. And I do remember the bottle of Amaretto, a little half pint or pint bottle underneath the table and dumping that into coffee and eating flat, you know, eating short stacks of pancakes. Where can I find me a corn dog? I'm hungry. Third verse. This is interesting. This is also interesting to because three verses in a row. Normally a lot of songs they'll have two verses followed by a chorus, you know or pre-chorus and in a chorus. Yeah. But this song, three verses in a row. So they're really um, setting the story up. And I think, as we mentioned before, I don't think there's a true chorus per se. It's really just the Hotel or a signature line at the end of each verse. Hmm. What was I saying? Okay, third verse. The road waves. Oh, wait a sec. Oh, this is an option here. I see. There was going to be some change in these lyrics, it seems. There is an option. They rode waves slash swam in the ocean. I think, I think Mr. Egg is rolling with swam in the ocean. So it goes like this. They swam in the ocean. They rolled in the dunes. Rolled in the dunes? What's that? Rolled in the dunes, you know, uh, ha hanky panky kind of kind of stuff. Ah, I have a recipe for hanky panky. Very good pancake. One does not have to travel afar for hanky panky. I I keep a hanky in my pocket just in case I dribble. And they they walked arm in arm down Asbury Ave. Asbury Ave is a street. Asbury Avenue is um along that that stretch um, of the island it has all the shops, restaurants and things like that. So it's a good place for to take a walk, um, do some window shopping, or stop in to get a bite to eat somewhere. Talking about things they wished they could have. The idea of walking arm in arm down, down Asbury Ave, talking about things that they did not have, uh, that, that kind of tells me that they're looking, you know, the, this couple's looking into the future, wondering, hmm, what should we get, what should we do? Oh yeah. And they stopped in that ninth, 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 ninth street cafe, and wobbled back to the hotel array. Now wobbling, so they it implies that they eat a lot of food. Okay. Oh 
Okay, next up, this would be the bridge. No, uh, no pun intended, get it? They're at the beach, bridge. <laughs> oh, let me see. Roll the dice in Atlantic City. That means gambling. Not something I want to do. I'd rather sit in a gazebo. Atlantic City was just a short drive north. A uh, good place to go at two o'clock in the morning uh, to, to roll some dice. Roller coasters in Wildwood. Oh. Wild, Wildwood, uh, as we said before, had good, good, good bars, uh, music, uh, boardwalk was great. The amusements there were, you know, they had all kinds of piers with roller coasters and everything, fun stuff. Maynard's in Margate. Maynard's in Margate. I think that's a place where, like, you'd, some people would start off the night, maybe just get a, like, happy hour drink there. I forget. Or Ocean City's Boardwalk and Paul's Fun Place. Now, if you're down there with a girlfriend, gone to the boardwalk, and yeah, maybe. And if you're in, you know, if you're 25 years old and you're going to, uh, you probably go to the bars instead of the boardwalk, as uh, just just my thought. But um, Paul's Fun Place it used to be like the place to go to play pinball and air hockey and stuff like that. Seven for one at Anchorage. There was so much to do. Seven for one, seven, seven beers for one dollar at the Anchorage. And the Anchorage was right across that 9th Street Bridge over in Summers Point on the mainland. And they knew this was their last day. Their last day at the Hotel Luray. Now notice here on the bridge, that this is where the geography that we've talked about before comes into play. And, and you can see that there's different areas mentioned in the bridge here. There's, there's the Atlantic City, Wildwood, Margate, Boardwalk, Summers Point, Anchorage, and then the back at the hotel. So, so you can see that the use of the setting geography is well used here. Okay. And another thing to note, even though it's nighttime, it was their last day. So you could have said that this is their last night, but that doesn't rhyme with hotel array. Okay, so there's some rhymes here that are not necessarily accurate, but they work. Okay. When you think about it too, a day, the night, is a part of the day. So it all, it all comes out in the wash, right? You think you could be a little more pacific? I mean, maybe I mean pacific, specific? And now it's time for the final verse, which would be that morning after. Seagulls were calling in the morning haze. And this is a repeat line. That line was used in the second verse, actually. There's those seagulls again. Trash trucks were hauling up the alleyways. And those two things go hand in hand, or should I say wing in wing. <laughs> the cars. Seagulls usually, you know, they'll go after a shrimp boat, okay? They'll go after the trash truck, too, because little pieces of garbage are falling off onto the sidewalk or no, onto the alleyway. And the birdies will eat it all up. I like birds. Trash trucks hauling the trash. The weekend's over. The party's over. It's, it's a, a symbol of things being over. So they started out early, crossed the 9th Street Bridge. There's that word bridge. A few boats were out on the water, drifting their flounder rigs. Now a rig is a, a, a setup. 
Mr. Figgs talked about that before. I think he, he talked about it in his surf, surf fishing video. And bridge and flounder rigs thrown in for uh, for a rhyme but yeah right up right on the 9th street bridge if usually if you look out in the summertime you'll see you'll see boats drifting fishing for flounders using flounder rigs and the flounder was also a popular dance craze where was i and she looked back and smiled as if to say we'll come back to the hotel array Interesting. You can, she's looking back, and you know that's that's a double meaning there. I guess you'd, you'd say looking back on the weekend, and back physically back to where they just came from. So there's that location element and the element of time, and. Interestingly enough, both of those both of those items fit well into this song. They're a part of the song, as we said before, the location and um, time itself. This song is a snapshot of history. When she looks back, that 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 too is kind of a a symbol of wow. The, the future, let's do that in the future. Let's, let's maybe come back here. So there's, there, there's that, that hope of the future for this couple. Um, and the song doesn't even go there. I, I, I had thought about putting a final verse in to, to say something like, well, she went this way and he went this way and the hotel isn't the hotel anymore. It's some other, you know, it got renamed and things changed, but I, that F sharp minor, that chord up to the C sharp minor chord, that kind of leaves a question mark and, and with an unknown ending. And that's kind of the way, looking back, maybe we'll come here again, it's kind of, you don't know what's going to happen. And that kind of, uh, same with them walking down Asbury Ave, talking about things in the future but nobody knows what's going to happen. So I, I kind of wanted to get that vibe in the tune. Um, it's probably not, um, not as easy to see if you're, unless you're looking for it, but... What else you got, Dr. Shank? And these song lyrics too, and the music too that goes along with it, as Mr. Vig mentioned, I think, or some, uh, the, the chordal question mark. This song, it's a snapshot in time, and it, it, it kind of makes, when you, when you listen to this song, the listener is, is um, transported into that time, into that setting, and you're rolling along with the lyrics each verse as things are happening, and then when when the girl in the song in the last verse looks back, we'll come back here again. And it, it leaves you with that feeling of, wow, what's going to happen next? Where, where does this story go? So it's kind of, gives you that snapshot and there's a little question wonder, what's going to happen? Um, so I think it hits the mark. I like it. I like these lyrics. Uh, yeah. I, I, as Vinyan would say, I dig this song. I think I got some sardine caught in my teeth. But all of the imagery, uh, the the happenings, the setting in this song, it's it's um, it all comes from experiences and and living on that island and being there for so many summers and years when I was a kid um, walking on the beach sandcastles I, I, I all of these things staying at the the hotels being on the beach the hitting the bars the um, 
Paul's Fun Place playing pinball. They're, these are all memories that get transported into this little three-minute song. Uh, and the hard part sometimes is knowing what to leave out. Uh, did Hemingway say that? I think he did. In any case, hope you like the song. Uh, then again, who knows? Uh, you, you might take a you might take a walk on the boardwalk. Who knows? You know. And that's that's the, the, the these these songwriting these songwriting one hundred and one videos that we've covered. Oh. How to come? How to go about oh, wow. writing the song, Just putting lyrics up, together, so melody. Oh. I, I think maybe the final for this for this type of song, the final piece. Maybe uh, maybe we'll get into the recording process. Maybe I'll just um, play the song um, in its entirety, um, just on an acoustic guitar, and and that you know we'd be thin. Ah, Hemingway's. Uh, isn't that a uh, water and hole in Waco?